All right, so we're back, and we're here trying to figure out how we're going to mount the uh, the Romeo DF, the Dio Robot Romeo Arduino board. Um, as you can see, we've put some standoffs on it that we happen to have. These did not come with a kit. You'll have to purchase these on your own. Um, but this is typically what we do just to give spacing. We don't like to mount things flush to metal, especially this won't work if you do that. Um, the reason why we chose this board and we are using it for this project is because it... Uh, <clears throat> It came with all the uh, came with programmable buttons to do different things, as well as the power for the motors, which is something that's very important to have. And you know, if we didn't purchase this one, we'd have to buy a shield that would actually have that, the motor shield itself, which we didn't want to have to do. We wanted to keep this as a simple kit for you to build. Now, we've had a couple challenges along the way during the building of this. Um, as you can see, it was very simple to put together. However, there were some snags. So for example, we had to solder a couple things. We had to solder the motors. We had to solder the switch itself. And then uh, we didn't have any instructions. But needless to say, once we found, we were able to derive where everything goes. If you need the instructions, just look at our review on this product. And we've actually put the link there for the uh, manual on how to assemble it. Now, the manual does not include how to wire up the circuitry. So I would hope that you would use this video to help you do so. Now, one of the things we want to talk about is how we're going to mount this. So, we could have mount we could mount the board directly onto the chassis or we can mount it directly onto this. Now, when we were looking at what pre-drilled holes are available after we put the standoffs, we found that this does not fit any of the holes in any configuration possible. We kept trying different um, different ways to mount it, but basically and ultimately we found out that basically we're just going to have to uh, wire this up. So one thing that we're going to do, and it's the way that we want to have this done, is basically how are we going to set this up? You know, are we going to put it like this? Are we going to put it like that? Now, I think for me it makes sense to mount it like this, just to give enough space on both the front and the back. Furthermore, we have the buttons all in the back, right where the switch is also, so it will be convenient for us to go back here just as much as it is here. The other thing we want to make note of is that once we screw these standoffs in, I believe they're going to go here, these standoffs. This is actually going to be for this plate. Okay, so we want to make sure that we have enough room, which we do. We got medium sized standoffs, which is good. The only other problem, though, is that there are no holes for this. Okay, that means that uh, we're going to have to drill into the chassis ourselves. So, what we're going to do is we're going to drill the holes where these standoffs are located and we're going to then mount this flush onto the uh, the base of the robot kit itself. This will give us plenty of room to unscrew. Now notice there are four screws that we need easy access to, which are right here. So we've made sure that we're going to be able to do that. Um, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of position it where we want it, mark the spots, take off the lid, drill the holes, and put it on. So in the next video you'll see us actually with this mounted and we'll start wiring up the harness. All right, so we're back, and we've gone ahead and mounted the board onto the upper chassis. Now, what we did was is that we put the standoffs, which are these white separators here, or these spacers, and we actually screwed them onto the board, and then what we did was we mounted this, we just kind of positioned it on top of this where we wanted it, and marked it with a magic marker, the holes that we needed to drill, okay? And then afterwards, we went ahead and we drilled through there with a regular drill bit uh, from DeWalt, and we put the standoffs through <clears throat> and we screwed them in with just some regular nuts on the back so as you can see that's the only customization that you really have to do to this kit which is good a lot of kits sometimes uh, a lot of other kits require you do a lot and this one we didn't have to do that much so uh, you know expect to you know with robot building there is going to be a, just a tad bit of uh, customization that you're going to have to do so having said that we're ready to put this back onto the unit now so I'm just going to feed these through again through the holes that I, uh, through the front and the back, just how we did in the earlier uh, video. Here we go. There you have it. It's mounted nice and neat. And we're just going to go ahead and use the same screws we used previously. Screw these right back in.
As you can see, I mounted it so that it was easy for me to get in and out of the uh, these screws, so I wouldn't have a lot of trouble doing so. I'm having problems with that one, so let's go ahead and do this one here first. Okay, and now let's see why we can't get this one in here. There we go. That one gave us a little bit of a problem, but we're able to get it in there. One of these stripped a little bit, so let's just use a flathead. That's the nice thing about these screws is that they're both Phillips and flathead. So if you do happen to strip one of them, they'll switch out, instantly turn into a flathead. That's a good thing. A lot of kits don't come with those types of screws, so once you strip it, you strip it, and then you're left with maybe a screw missing or having to put a screw that doesn't really fit on there. So as you can see, here we are. We've mounted the Romeo board onto the DF Robot uh, mobile platform, four-wheel drive, and everything is still in place just how we want it. Now what we're going to have to do is start wiring this up. Now it's pretty straightforward. I'm not sure if any of them, any of them anyone has ever wired up an Arduino board but it's pretty straightforward everything is labeled nicely the hardest part of this wiring will be connecting the motors which won't be that hard, it's just basically have multiple wires there so you're going to have to know how to set it up we're also going to trim the wires a bit because we do have a lot of excess as you can see and uh, we're good to go actually so let's see here I'm going to just zoom in a little bit brightness on here so we can see what we're doing. Alright, so just kind of quickly look at this. Be wired. Now, what I recommend you do is this will power, and we're going to have to wire at the, these two loose wires here. It actually just piss. The good thing is that you can pick that up at Radio Shack for literally cents. So, what do we can find here? Okay. Which is easily available online. And we're going to see what is what here. So when we go to it, so what this says here basically is that this is going to be our motor power. This is our motors. This is servo, USB, and our other power. So servo, uh, let's see, the motor power, power input. So let's make sure because... See if we can wire just this one here to give the whole board power and not have to worry about these connectors here. 